two days ago, the Finance Minister, Mr. Ken Oferiata, presented a mid-year review of the 2017 budget in Parliament and concluded that the economy is on the right path of recovery and well positioned to enable the government to implement its programs. While many agree with him, others contend that the government could have done better. Now, do these figures presented by the Finance Minister signify better days ahead or they are just a cosmetic makeup over a weak economic structure. To discuss these and more, I have with me Dr. Eric Asibe, Senior Lecturer in the Economics uh, Department, University of Ghana, and an Agent Fellow of the Institute of Economic Affairs. And you are watching The Hard Truth. My name is Nana Akusi Akunira Sante Samuels. Senior Lecturer at uh, Economics Department, University of Ghana, Dr. Eric Ose Asibe. It's in our studio. Welcome to the heart with Eric. Thank you very How much. How are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, the budget guy, you're so busy now. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, we are all helping to shape the future of this country. Good, good. But how, how is the economics department doing? Uh, we are doing well. Good. Yeah. We are keeping on. Okay. Keeping on. You're keeping on. Yeah. Good. Now, the media budget review has uh, been presented by the finance minister, Ken Ofriata. He emphasized um, that the macroeconomics indicator has show that economic you know is our economy is on the right path of recovery and that investors or investor confidence has been restored I mean how do you see it do you think it's, it's, it's a fact well um, if the numbers and the trends are anything to go by then we can say that yes hmm. uh, these are facts um, you could clearly see that we've made some significant progress mm -hmm. I mean, uh, all the macroeconomic indicators appear to be trending in the right direction. Uh, you look at inflation, inflation has been trending downward. Um, the last time we ended the year with 15.4, and as we speak, it's 12.1%. That is good. Um, you look at interest rates, um, treasurable rates, which what's already coming down it came to about 16.7 percent by the end of the year it's currently around level so what did he did, he did he give us a and clear picture i mean from yes, what he so, said so i mean yeah. the macro for macroeconomy often there are certain indicators that will uh, tell you whether your economy is doing well or not that mm -hmm. is at the aggregate level mm -hmm. you know so at the aggregate level first you need to look at how these indicators are performing and so you look at exchange rate exchange rate has remained a little stable, relatively stable compared to the same time last year. Um, what else? You look at growth, right? Economic growth, which is the base, the productive base of the economy. Um, the first quarter uh, data that the uh, Ministry, uh, Ghana Stats Car Service mm. put out, actually showed that the country. Uh, grew by about 6.6%. Mm -hmm. Of course, we are yet to see the second quarter, which for me will be very significant because that is really when the MPP government actually took hold of the economy. Mm -hmm. The first quarter, they hadn't really set up well. So most of the, the budget was read in March. And so most of the effect of the, the policies and initiative would really reflect in the but first I, and the I'm wondering quarter. from what fact did uh, the finance minister say all of that investor confidence has been restored things are moving on well why well, did he uh, say yes. that? So in that case you perhaps have to maybe look at uh, investment uh, inflows uh, if you look at GIPC you know you're comparing the extent to which investors investments are responding mm. to some of the uh, reforms and policy changes uh, compared to the previous year and if you can see a clear up or difference then you may uh, say that yes uh, confidence level is being restored the uh, Bank of Ghana uh, also said that you no know, Bank of Ghana conducts uh, periodic uh, market research mm -hmm. you know uh, confidence levels of executives uh, marketers and uh, economists uh, how they see the economy and it looks like that also have improved. So on the on that score, we can say that yes, the economy appears to be on track, but there's still some no, but, know, but, but, uh, but downside some risk. Say, right. So some will say, well, he, he's saying yeah. things are improving, but it's not reflecting in our pockets. What would you say to that? Well, as, as for that, I mean, you will not see, it is not tangible for you to see that, the, I mean, some money should come to mm, your pocket. Mm. But the mere fact that you don't wake up thinking about the fact that 
you go to the market and prices have changed, you know, that you, you is don't, you so don't the, really think about... Is it so significant? About, oh, I mean, how significant yeah. is the change yeah, in the market quite, prices? Yeah, it, it's because it's adding more in terms of your purchasing power, you know. If, for example, milk is uh, three cities, mm. you know, at the beginning of the year and still remains three cities, you know, it is good. If it's now gone up to three cities, 50 pesos, then you are worse off. Mm. Yeah, you know, because mm -hmm. your same three cities at the beginning of the year could no longer buy you a milk. So if you can still buy milk mm. at the same price, then it tells you that uh, that is good. You know, means that the rate at which prices are increasing, you know, has slowed considerably. So, but that will not mean that money really come into your pocket. Mm -hmm. The other way that maybe people may say, well, has it really generated enough job? Because that is where you see direct income coming yeah, to your pocket. Because investors are coming in. Yeah, the mm. money that comes in. That one we are yet to see, you know, because I mean, most of the government policies, the one district, one factory, and the industrialization, mm. IP mm. policies, and all of that, many of them have not taken off, even as we speak. So, so uh, as to this point, what are some of the loopholes that, you know, you have identified in the review that, you know, the government will have to take a second look at? Yes, I think... Uh, few things particularly with regard to the fiscal you know um we are talking about we closing the fiscal gap mm. in fact the government has reviewed the uh, budget deficit from 6.5 to 6.3 which is um good because it's consolidating you know the, you are reducing the gap which is which has an implication for your debt stock and all of that. I'm sure we'll talk about that. So that has been done. But why did government do that? Mm. You know, the main reason why government closed that gap or reduced the fiscal deficit is because revenue is underperforming. We are not doing that well in regard to revenue. Um, if you look at the budget that was read in March this year, government projection was to increase revenue by 33%. And it was largely going to come from uh, corporate taxes and then uh, import duties, street taxes. But all of these have underperformed woefully. So what that means is that your expenditure, mm. you know, you have budgeted to spend certain amount. You may not be able to spend that amount. Mm -hmm. So prudency requires that you have to reduce your expenditure to match your revenue. Do we see that happening? And that is, what, that is one good thing that I've seen about this budget, that government trying to align its expenditure with the revenue collection. Mm -hmm. And even in doing that, it has even reduced the expenditure even more than the revenue shortfall. And that is why the gap is now closing from 6.5 to 6.3. But there is also an effect you know, on the economy, because however that we want to see it, although it is good, it's prudent, it means that government is committed to fiscal discipline, because in the past, what we have seen is that even at times where revenues are not doing well, mm -hmm. that is when government keeps it spending, you know, and when you do that, you widen the gap, you enlarge the, the gap, the, the gap between your revenue and your expenditure, and that causes huge problem of you have to having to borrow so much to finance that gap. This time around, government is saying that no, we will only spend what we are getting. So if revenue is not coming in, then we must also reduce our expenditure. It is good, that is prudent, that is all what we have been talking about. But there's a flip side to that, because expenditure we all know is a key driver of growth, you know. You look at, so which areas are government cutting in terms of expenditure? Government says it's cutting 0.3% mm -hmm. of GDP mm -hmm. of goods and services. Yeah. It's cutting 0.3% of GDP of statutory funds. And it's also, that's 0.4% of goods and services, 0.3% of statutory, and 0.3% of uh, capital expenditures, right, CAPEX. So, most of these are growth enhancing expenditures, especially infrastructure, you know. 
So what that means is that that can have negative effect on your growth projections. You know, so although it is prudent, it could have some negative impact on your ability to expand the economy because if the MDAs are not spending on their investments and their activities, it tend to kind of slow down the you know economic activity in, 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 in the economy. And if you are not spending on infrastructure like roads, like um, hospitals and schools infrastructure and all the other things, then you are also not creating uh, jobs uh, for the people. So right. that could, could, may not necessarily, but it could you, you know, dampen your growth. Mm. Although you would have achieved fiscal consolidation, you would have done that at a cost to the expansion of the economy. Yeah, you know, what, what of this? The minority or, you know, also feels that the, the figures presented by the, the minister are cosmetic, they call it, and the government is accumulating arrears and failing to pay uh, contractors. Could this be the case? Yes. Um, I mean, government is saying that it's auditing this arrest, the arrest to the tune of about seven billion, mm -hmm. you know, Ghana cities, mm -hmm. and some of which government believe that they were unwarranted, the, 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 the due diligence were not done on them. So government is actually looking into that. Now, uh, so, so it's an issue of balancing uh, value for money, mm -hmm. you know, and also growing the economy, you understand? Because when these arrests are not paid, it has a double effect on the economy. One, you are depriving no, the banking... Does that make it cosmetic? Or the minority well, well, it, are just being minority because well, it, it's, it's just that government from, is from trying government. to be prudent. Mm. You will not just come and take anything like that on, you know. You want to take your time. Mm -hmm. And this is the time that the economy is really under serious stress. Yeah. In terms of finance, what was, whatever was left behind, mm -hmm. there was nothing. Mm -hmm. And so government is taking its time. And I believe what government is doing. Because you cannot just also come in and start spending, particularly when you have recorded a budget deficit of about close to 10% in just the year gone by. You know, huge budget deficit, which had put a lot of things out of place. Mm. You know, off budget expenditures and the expenditures that were not approved and all of that. And so you need to take your time to try to stabilize things, to try to get your finances well in order achieve macroeconomic stability, then you begin to think about how to grow the economy. Mm. So for me, I'm all for that, but we just have to prepare ourselves, knowing that since we are trending this course, it definitely is going to mean that we need to sacrifice a little more. IRS, it's important that government pays the IRS mm. as soon as possible for those that are genuinely contracted, because it's also depriving the economy, particularly the banking sector, the, net, the, the needed liquidity. And also these contractors, you know, they need this money to invest in the economy or to hire people to do works and all of that. And so when you, they don't get their money, they also don't work. And it slows, you know, economic activity. And all of that can come back to help the economy, you know. Mm -hmm. So much as government wants to look into it, I think the process has to be expedited so that you know, those that deserve whatever contract that they were, they get th th these monies back and put it back into the economy because it's going to help the government itself. Otherwise, I think what government is doing is right. He couldn't have just gone ahead and, and, and even the monies were not there. During the uh, mm -hmm. maiden national policy statement uh, summit this year, uh, you were have quoted to have said that no matter how well the microeconomy setup is improved, we have a weak uh, productive structure that drags the ability of the productive sector to produce more to increase exports and trade, mm. then it's not going to be sustainable. That was mm. uh, 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 what you said. In your view, has it reflected significantly in the productive structure of the economy? Do you think so? Yeah, I, I mean, I always have the view that um, whatever macroeconomic stability that we, we achieve, if we do not have uh, our productive base expanding, it is not going to be sustainable. Mm. That is the gospel truth because if you can achieve fiscal deficit, you know, gap, you can bring it down. But if the economy is not growing for you to generate more revenue, you know, you have to keep borrowing and adding to your debt stock and adding to your interest costs and 
all of that come back to as we increase your expenditures without necessarily increasing your infrastructure and all of that. And so the good thing about the present budget, you know, is about the government trying to balance the two because this is one of the budget that you could see a very deliberate policies towards the real set of the economy, like uh, policies that geared towards uh, bringing in investments that would invest in the productive sectors of the economy, mm -hmm. one district, one factory. Assuming all the districts are, are able to get factories, what is that going to mean? It means that we're going to expand our productive base. You know, some of them are going to export, you know, and bring in more revenue, uh, foreign currency, which is more sustainable other than borrowing and all of that to show up our currency. And these businesses along the value chain uh, are going to employ people from the productive to the transportation to the harbor and all of that. And so that is good, you know, not only looking at the demand-driven policies, not looking at the fiscal consolidation, how to cut interest rate, how to tighten monetary policy, you know, all of that for me, they are just cosmetic, they are just short-time, you know, gains. But in the long term, is to making sure that your agricultural sector is working and much more efficiently, you know, making sure that your manufacturing sector is expanding, is employing people, is producing at competitively rate and is exporting, you know. These are the things that will sustain the economy. And so the budget appears to reflect that, you know, kind of uh, feeling. But the problem is how is the private sector going to respond? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because that is key. Because uh, all the, the initiatives are going to be driven by the private sector. So, which means that you not just only put out the policies and the framework, but you must also make sure that the business enabled environment is conducive. You know, that will make it attractive enough for the private sector to put its money. Mm. You know, right. and so it's a combination of things that have to be. We'll done. be right back.